Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of Denial by Peter James. So this was published in 1998. I find with James, um, other than his Roy Grace series, which tend to be consistently quite good, his standalone novels are a bit hit and miss here and there. Actually, this does have a tie-in with Roy Grace in terms of um, one of his detectives makes a cameo appearance in this. Um, so perhaps that's why I enjoyed it. Spoiler alert there. Um, as always, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and read out some of my tabs that I highlighted, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, when actress Gloria Lamarck takes her own life, her devoted son, Thomas, is heartbroken. Something must be wrong with a world in which such a tragedy is allowed to happen. How could her high-profile media star psychiatrist have failed to save such a special person, whom Thomas loved in such a very special way? Dr. Tennant has a lesson to learn, a very painful one. Michael is caught up in the first flush of love, but has no idea how dangerous romance can be. For both Michael and Thomas will do anything for the woman they love. Dun dun dun. So yeah, it's got those kind of creepy sun elements, uh, reminiscent of Psycho. There is actually even a, a, mess, a mention of Psycho in this at one point. And um, we get, quite unusually, we get the killer's point of view pretty much from the start. Um, so in fact here, chapter 2, he's writing his journal. He's got Wednesday the 9th of July 1997. No one ever prepares us for death. It ought to be on the school curriculum. Instead, teachers make us learn that in a right angle triangle, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the two remaining sides. I've carried that nugget in my head for 25 years and never yet had any use for it. They make us learn how to ask the way to the town hall in French. I've got through 37 years of my life without ever needing to do this. I mean, I don't know what town hall is, to be fair. Uwe le summon seal to play or super play if you're being formal. Uh, and then there's a date that happens at the Globe to see Measure for Measure. And uh, I've never seen Measure for Measure. I did recently read it, but I have been to the Globe. I saw Romeo and Juliet a few times. I saw Hamlet as well. It's a great experience if you can, if you, if you can go. And this little line here. It was bad enough having lose agents run by foreigners. I think times have changed a little bit since there. I mean, this is the bad guy thinking that too, but... I mean, it's it's actually weird if you go into a news agent and they're not foreign of some description, and I quite like it as well though, because like otherwise I wouldn't get exposed to those cultures. Does that make sense? Like I went to the Polish shop the other day and um, I found some like actually found some pretty good vegan stuff. I was quite impressed with, and like a uh, vegan, it was vegan mayo, but it was Polish vegan mayo. It was so good. It was um, probably a little not piss off. It wasn't quite as good as vegan A's, but it was close. And it was a lot cheaper. We get uh, down here. Uh, to the bottom of the list of notes he had written down, he added a mental one. Fubab. It stood for fucked up beyond all belief. Is it meant to be Fubar? I've always heard Fubar. Recognition. Someone down here as well. Um, she's thinking about Liam Neeson and it goes, and suddenly she couldn't remember whether Liam Neeson was English or American. Isn't he Irish? So yeah, Glenn Branson makes an appearance and he's a familiar face from the Roy Grace books. Describing the police office here and he says, uh, on the wall beside him was a drawing of two large squares, underneath which was printed the words, Picasso's testicles. We have a reference to Tony Blair being the Prime Minister. Just about remember that. And then for some reason this guy is um, writing an article for the Daily Mail, and then he faxes it to his editor. And I'm like, because well, he, he was explicitly writing it on his computer, and this was written, I mean, I guess it was written in 1997, that's when it's set, published in 98. You'd use email, surely. I had an email address then, and I was eight years old. I, you, you know, surely a major editor at a major features newspaper would have an email address. I don't know, it just seemed like a bit backwards to write it on the computer and then fax it, you know? Weird. Um, I suppose, to be fair, maybe that then the editor will then write notes on it and fax it back and it'll amend the notes, so it's kind of like handwriting notes, because probably chat changes and comments on Microsoft Word probably weren't at the best at the time trying to track this woman down and one of the guy the guys he's speaking to he goes i really think you're overreacting mr tembi if you've been after this if you've been after her this obsessively i'm not surprised she's disappeared she's probably terrified of you which for me is what i would think if i hadn't read the rest of the book and known that she has disappeared like for a bad reason you know test with me get this diary entry on wednesday 30th of july 1997 the botvinnik queen's ruck defense this is an incredibly old move Deeper Blue used a variation of this in Game 3 against Kasparov in 1997. And just now my friend Jürgen Jürgens in Clearwater Springs, Florida has used this same move. 
First of all, if you're writing on the 30th of July 1997, why would you say that he used this in 1997? You would say like he used this, it was actually about six weeks before this diary entry. It was also called Deep Blue, not Deeper Blue. I looked it up in case Deeper Blue was some kind of variant I hadn't heard of, but apparently not. We cut somebody's eye with a knife and um, we get this really disturbing part. Uh, he started to hoist Thomas out by his hair. As he did so, Thomas raised his right hand and brought the blade in one fast, firm, horizontal slash across the boy's eyeball, straight across the white, the greeny-grey iris and the black pupil. It was like slicing a grape. He saw the clean parting following the line of the incision, and then, in that brief, exquisite moment before Dickinson realised what had happened, clear fluid oozed out. It looked just like grape juice. Mmm. So yeah, overall, I did enjoy this book. I think James can be pretty hit and miss, especially with his earlier stuff. Um, but for me, I think it depends upon the subject matter. Here, obviously, there's the theme of denial. There's a lot of darker parts to it, uh, which I always enjoy reading about. And it was quite a gritty thriller. I also like the fact that we're following the bad guy right from the start. So usually you're kind of figuring out throughout. Whereas in this one, the bigger question is actually like, how is he going to be stopped? Is he going to be stopped, you know? And, um, but also getting to know more about his backstory at the same time. Like, you wouldn't be able to learn the backstory from a different point of view. Um, it, you need to know the killer from the start, really, for, for this to work. But it did work really well. I gave it like a 3.75, 4 out of 5, and would recommend, especially if you're into thrillers. So there you have it. That's what I thought of Denial by Peter James. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.